بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ایم یور ہوسٹ رانا محمد کاشف اینڈ یو آر واچنگ پازیٹیو پیپل کمیشن اینڈ ویلکم ٹو مائی انٹروڈکشن ٹو آر پروگرامک سیریز ٹوڈے از دی ایپیسوڈ نمبر ٹین اینڈ جسٹ ٹو ریک ایپ وٹ وی ڈیڈ ان دی پریویس ایپیسوڈ وی وی لرنڈ ہاؤ ٹو رائٹ آور ویری فرسٹ فنکشن ان آر اینڈ وی یوز ویری سمپل اپروچ سو ایز ٹو رائٹ آور ویری فرسٹ فنکشن ان آر اینڈ وٹ از ایپیسوڈ نمبر ٹین اینڈ ایپیسوڈ نمبر ٹین از اباؤٹ ایل اپلائی اینڈ ایس اپلائی این آر ان دس لیسن یو ول لرن ہاؤ ٹو یوز ایل اپلائی اینڈ ایس اپلائی دا ٹو موسٹ امپارٹنٹ ممبر آف آرز اپلائی فیملی اینڈ آلسو نون ایز لو فنکشن دا ادر ٹو آر وی اپلائی اینڈ ٹی اپلائی دا مور اباؤٹ دیٹ ان دی نیکسٹ ایپیسوڈ اینڈ ناؤ لیٹس موو ٹو آور آر اسٹوڈیو ٹو گیٹ اسٹارٹیڈ تھرو آؤٹ دس لیسن وی ول یوز دی فلیگز ڈیٹا سیٹ فرام دی یو سی آئی مشین لرننگ ریپوزٹری دس ڈیٹا سیٹ کنٹینز ڈیٹیلز آف ویریس نیشنز اینڈ دیئر فلیگس مور انفارمیشن مے بی فاؤنڈ ایٹ دی لنک گیون ان ویڈیو ڈسکرپشن اینڈ آئی ول آلسو گیو دا لنک آف دی ڈیٹا سیٹ اینڈ لیٹس ریڈ آور ڈیٹا سیٹ سو یو کین گیٹ اے فیل فار ہاؤ دیز اسپیشل فنکشن ورکس ناؤ ریڈ ڈیٹا بائی Uh, let's name it at flags read dot csv and flags dot csv from my default working directory i have stored the data set in a variable called flags and now let's type head flags to preview uh, the first six lines that is the head of the data set these are the first six lines against each and every variable in this flags data set and now let's check out the dimension of the data set uh, dimension of our data set uh, this tells us that there are 194 rows or observations and 30 columns or variables each observation is a country like this each observation is a country and each variable describe describe some characteristics of that country or its flag as with any data set we would like to know in what format the variables have been stored in other words what is the class of each variable hmm. uh, what happens if we do class of flags let's check it out class of flags it's data dot frame that uh, just tells us that the entire data set is stored as a data dot frame which doesn't answer our question uh, what we really need is to call the class function on each individual column interesting huh? while we could do this manually one column at a time it's much faster if we can automate the process hmm sounds like a loop uh, now let's try it our first function of today l apply what l apply does l apply function takes a list as a input applies a function to each element of the list then returns a list of the same length as the original one since our data frame is really just a list of vectors we can use l apply to apply the class function to each column of the flags data set let's see it in action now let's type Uh, let's type c l s underscore list and us l apply of what uh, what is our list it is flags and what is our function we want to know the class of every variable and uh, what th what this will does it will enable us to apply the class function to each column of the flags data set and store the result in a variable called cls underscore list uh, note that you just supply the name of the function you want to apply uh, which is class in this case without the usual parenthesis after it uh, now let's type uh, cls underscore list to view the results uh, you can now know the class of every variable in our flag data set if i scroll up you can see we we now know the class of every variable in our data set the l in l apply stands for the list now let's type class of cls underscore list and it is a list it was just to confirm that l apply returned a list as expected we got a list of uh, length 30 one element for each variable or column the output would be considerably more compact if we could present it 
if you could represent it as a vector instead of a list uh, you may remember from a previous lesson that lists are most helpful for storing multiple classes of data in this case since every element of the list returned by l apply is a character vector of length one integer 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 and character uh, can be simplified to a character vector as well to do this manually we can do something like uh, as dot character on cls sorry on cls underscore list moving on as apply allows us to automate this process by calling l apply behind the scenes but then attempting to simplify hence the s in s apply is about simplifying the results for you if we need help let's type question mark on s apply you can read the documentation over here but that's not a part of this lecture you can do this by yourself uh, now let's use s apply the same way you we used l apply to get the class of each column of the flags data set and now let's store it in a new variable cls underscore vect and s apply on our flags data set and we want to know the class and if i just print cls underscore vect i can have the class of every variable in my flags data set and now let's use class of cls underscore vect to confirm that s apply simplified the result to a character vector these results are more simplified as compared to l apply output well in general if the result is a list where every element is of length one then s apply returns a vector like in this case if the result is a list where every element is a vector of the same length greater than one s apply returns a matrix if s apply can't figure out things out then it just returns a list anyways no different from what l apply would give you now let's uh, let's practice using l apply and s apply some more uh, well columns 11 through 17 of our data set are indicated variables and if i just go where we used head from 11 to 17 uh, which each representing a different color the value of the indicator variable is one if the color is present in a country's flag and zero otherwise from red green blue gold black white orange and more therefore if we want to know the total number of countries in our data set with for example the color orange on their flag we can just add up all of the ones and zeros in the orange column let's try it out sum of flags and orange and it gives me 26 now we want to repeat this operation for each of the colors recorded in the data set first let's extract the columns containing the color data by doing something like flags underscore colors just subset the data set with the colors column 11 colon 17 uh, note that the comma before 11 colon 17 this subsetting command tells r that we want all rows but only columns 11 through 17 now let's use the head function to look at the first six lines of the our flag underscore colors now we have only colors to get a list containing the sum of each column of flag underscore color let's call the l apply function with two arguments how and let's do it l apply and uh, flag underscore colors we just created and what function we want we want sum sorry flags the first argument before going to the output let us understand this first the first argument is the object over which we are looping in this case flags underscore colors and the second argument is the name of the function we wish to apply to each column that is sum so against each variable it gives the sum 
of the every variable in the data set now we need to remember that the second argument is just the name of the function with no parenthesis this tells us that the 194 flags in our data set 153 contain the color red 91 contain green 99 blue and so on 52 for black so the result is a list since l apply always returns a list each element of the list is of length one so the result can be simplified to a vector by calling s apply instead of l apply now let's try it s apply the same flags underscore colors and what function we want to use some and you can see it is more simplified results as compared to l apply uh, now moving on uh, perhaps it's more informative to find the proportion of flags out of 194 countries in our data set containing each color uh, how since each column is just a bunch of ones and zeros the arithmetic mean of each column will give us the proportion of ones now time to use s apply to apply the mean function to each column of flags underscore colors remember that the second argument to s apply should just specify the name of the function how we can find the proportion let's do it s apply flags underscore colors and what function this time around mean we get the proportion of flags containing each color in the examples we have looked at so far s apply has been able to simplify the result to a vector uh, that's because each element of the list returned by l apply was a vector of length one recall that uh, s apply instead returns a matrix when each element of the list returned by l apply is a vector of the same length greater than one uh, to illustrate this let's extract columns 19 through 23 from the flags data set and store the result in a new data frame let's do it flags underscore shapes and flags all rows from column 19 through 23 uh, that will do it sorry uh, sorry a typo there flags now we have it uh, each of these columns uh, variables represent the let me just paste it each of these columns now represent the number of times a particular shape or design appears on a country's flag we are interested in minimum and maximum number of times each shape or design appears uh, the range function returns the minimum and maximum of its first argument which should be a numeric vector now let's use l apply to apply the range function to each column of flag underscore shapes we just created now let's type l apply uh, flag underscore shapes and which function this time around range again a typo from me sorry flags underscore shapes and range by now we know that l apply always returns a list now we will do the same operations but using s apply and store the result in a variable called shape underscore mat like this shape underscore mat s apply flag underscore shapes and function this time range again type of from me sorry flags underscore shape and range let's view the contents of shape underscore mat now each column of shape underscore mat gives the minimum first row and maximum row number two its respective shape appears in different flags now let's use the class function to confirm that shape underscore mat is a matrix now let's class of shape underscore mat it's a matrix array 
uh, as we have seen s apply always attempt to simplify the results given by l apply it has been successful in doing so for each of the examples we have looked at so far now let's look at an example where s apply can't figure out how to simplify the result and thus returns a list no different from l apply hmm okay uh, now when given a vector the unique function returns a vector with all duplicate elements removed uh, in other words unique returns a vector of only unique element to see how it works uh, let's try something like uh, unique sorry u u n i q u e unique c of 3 4 5 5 6 6 it gives me only unique elements so now you know how unique works uh, now we want to know the unique values for each variable in the flags data set uh, to accomplish this let's use l apply to apply the unique function to each column in the flags data set uh, storing the result like uh, this uh, unique underscore wells uh, l apply and uh, on flags data set and i want to use unique function and let's just print unique underscore wells and it gives me unique values for each and every but it's a list again because we have used l apply uh, since unique underscore wells is a list uh, you can use uh, what you have learned to determine the length of each element of unique underscore wells that is the number of unique values for each variable now let's use it as apply unique underscore wells and un uh, sorry length again typo from me u n i q u e sorry now we have the length of the each element of unique underscore wells the fact that the elements of the unique underscore wells list are all vectors of different length poses a problem for s apply uh, since there's no obvious way of simplifying the result use s apply to apply the unique function to each column of the flags data set to see that you get the same unsimplified list that you got from l apply to compare let's try s apply on flags you can see it is given the same output as we did with the l apply uh, occasionally you may need to apply a function that is yet not defined thus requiring you to write your own uh, well we have learned in the previous episode but writing functions in r is beyond the scope of uh, this lesson but let's look at a quick example of how you might do so in the context of loop function uh, now let's dig into it pretend uh, pretend you are interested in only the second item from each element of the unique underscore wells list uh, that we just created uh, since each element of the unique underscore wells list is a vector and we are not aware of any built-in function in r that returns the second element of a vector hmm. uh, we will construct our own function now the function i'm going to write uh, will return a list containing the second item from each element of the unique underscore was list now let's type l apply unique u n i q u e underscore wells and now let's our write write our own function unique of some element e l e m i write and e l e m of second element uh, before executing that before executing this uh, l apply function uh, note that our function takes one argument one argument e l e m which, which is just a dummy variable that takes on the value of each element of unique underscore wells in turn the only difference between previous examples and this one is that we are defining and using our own function right in the call to 
l apply i just execute it and i have the second element the uh, our function has no name and disappears as soon as l apply is done using it uh, so called anonymous functions can be very useful when one of our built in function isn't an option so that is it for today's lesson uh, we have come to the end of our episode in this lesson we learned how to use the powerful l apply and s apply functions to apply an operation over the elements of a list in the next lessons we will take a look at some close relatives of l apply and s apply and what's coming up for the next episode in the episode number 11 of the this series uh, we will learn the two close relatives of today's lesson v apply and t apply in this lesson we will learn how to use v apply and t apply each of which serves a very specific purpose within the split apply combine methodology again just to acknowledge this course is inspired by swirl package in r you can use r within r by installing swirl package by yourself as well till then the next episode it's goodbye from me